Thank you, Anne. And good evening, everybody, or good afternoon, wherever you are. Um, and I have the pleasure to recap for you our recent town hall discussion that took place on July 13th. The focus of this town hall was on supporting RPCVs during readjustment at home. And we had over 60 people contribute to the discussion and the big ideas. First of all, though, I would like to thank our plenary speakers, Miriam Foote, who shared the results and recommendations from the Women of Color Advancing Peace and Security Survey that was administered to 461 evacuated volunteers. Sandy Giver presented information about volunteers who experienced trauma during service and intercultural expert Lorette Benhold gave us three pieces of advice. First, acknowledge that the reentry process is real and nonlinear. Second, find a network and reach out. Third, get involved. And I have to say that these presentations really helped us set the stage for the discussions and big ideas that followed. Uh, first, big idea. We need to revamp medical services to lengthen health care coverage post-service. Uh, it's unrealistic to believe that we can rely on the idea that volunteers are able to get on a parent's insurance plan. We also need to acknowledge that the job hunt often takes six months or longer. Also related to health services uh, is the access and stigma that's attached to receiving mental health services. This is a particular concern to evacuated volunteers that want to return or reapply to service. They feel that they could be denied or held back from service if they take advantage of the mental health services to address the trauma that was caused as a result of this evacuation. The second big idea is the need to expand non-competitive eligibility for all qualifying RPCVs. This would align with what is offered to the Peace Corps staff currently and it would also acknowledge that not all RPCVs are ready for federal service immediately following their Peace Corps experience. Additionally, the federal hiring process is lengthy and this time limit, especially in the current climate of COVID-19 and the number of evacuees limits the possibilities of the NCE benefit. So these big ideas were informed by our conversations on topics that included a need for a longer and more standardized close of service. This could be thought of as maybe a reverse staging. Many RPCVs felt the ending of service and connection to Peace Corps was an abrupt end, uh, leaving them a little bit disoriented and frustrated. Also, depending on the country of service, COS conferences were either hit or miss. Some had great experiences, but many others noted a lack of focus on the actual readjustment piece and more of a focus on completing paperwork. So, as part of the close of service and readjustment issues, participants also share, shared that we need to streamline and improve the process of sharing resources, both with current Peace Corps volunteers and returned Peace Corps volunteers. Participants all shared a variety of resources that are available, but these are found in many different places, websites, Facebook, WhatsApp groups, um, and not all are aware of many services or resources available. This includes the concern that many in the Peace Corps community are not hearing about the National Peace Corps Association. The key takeaway from this part of the discussion is we need a more centralized system for sharing and connecting people to resources. This is where this is ever more important as many career services are no longer available through Peace Corps headquarters due to a closure of the Career Center in 2019. With this being said, we were promised career support as part of our recruitment to Peace Corps. We were told that we would have the support at the end of our service to help us get into the jobs and meet our future goals. The Peace Corps community feels let down by the recent closure and limiting of services from Peace Corps headquarters for returned volunteers. Fortunately, the National Peace Corps Association's global reentry program has helped fill the gap with regular podcasts, the mentor match, and virtual trainings. Finally, RPCVs worldwide are doing what we do best and stepping up to fill gaps to support each other during readjustment for evacuated volunteers. The Peace Corps community of friends and returned volunteers has provided advice, rides, and housing. Over 300 have volunteered to serve as mentors to support career and education goals. One very impressive project that was shared was the creation of the RPCV Health Crusade group and website. This group offers a library of resources and options to connect to free services. 
and have been that, that have been donated. These resources can be found at rpcvhealthcrusade.org. Thank you to all that have stepped up to support our community.